In this video, we're gonna talk about using AI to tag and organize your media with Axel AI. Real quick, you're watching VP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors, Blackmagic and Atomos for helping make our NAB coverage possible. And now back to the video. All right, I'm here at Axel AI with Sam. Sam, good to see you. Good to see uh, you too. So just tell me, what is Axel AI? So Axel AI is software that helps our customers, and we have over a thousand of them, search, manage, and repurpose their media using AI. And so, yeah, like, maybe you can go a little bit deeper on the explanation. Sure, like, sure. What are so, some of these functions? So essentially, sweep through your storage, any type of storage. Could be cloud, could be local. The majority of our customers today have local on-premise storage, okay. but we have a big new announcement here at the show with Backblaze, who's one of the leading cloud vendors. And, and what it does is it catalogs the material, it makes low-res previews, and then it feeds them into our AI engines that do things like face recognition, scene understanding, object and logo recognition, even numbers and characters on screen, and transcription. And then it puts all that in a big database that you can search. Nice. And are these uh, AI models, are these ones that uh, Axel AI developed? Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So the majority of it is, is developed in-house and deployable on-premise by our customers. We have a, a, a few external modules that we license, but even those can be deployed on-premise. Oh, so the idea is it's a platform that you can extend because AI is evolving so rapidly. Mm -hmm. We don't claim to have all the answers, but we believe that with an open approach, that our customers can get the best value over time and really make the most progress. And so how is this sort of set up? Is it sort of like if you need some models for identifying faces, you can do that, but maybe if you don't need another model, you don't have to get that model? Correct, it's a la carte, and then we're also doing some specialized ones, like one example is sports highlights. We're a generalist company, 25 people. We're unlikely to ever develop like a sports highlight module, yeah. but we have partners who do, and so we can plug those in, or sophisticated audio processing, right? So dubbing, automated dubbing. Yeah. Again, not something we're gonna do, but our partners do. So you can plug those in and get the benefits of AI around our core platform, and the costs are an order of magnitude less expensive than feeding it out to you know Amazon or Google or one of the hyperscalers to do on their AI. It's just untenable, really, how much that costs, especially if you're dealing with raw footage. Many of our customers are reality shows, movies, you know, they, they have dailies, they have huge yeah, amounts of footage. It's just not worth it to send this stuff out to the cloud. And they're yeah. concerned about the privacy issues. Right, and that's interesting. So a lot of these, all these models can run on premises if you don't have to send them to the cloud to get for the processing to happen if you don't want to. Exactly right. And there's, you know, as just one example, the default terms of service for Amazon recognition are that they have the right to repurpose anything you send to their recognition engines for future training of you know not what. And for most of our customers, that's like a non-starter. So again, running this stuff on premise is, is safer, it's more contained, and it's much more affordable. When you uh, said they could run on-prem, uh, are there, uh, how small of a hard drive are we talking about? Like, could it be someone's desktop drive or does it have to be like a NAS or a server? So we can work with all kinds of server capacity. Generally, the cutoff for doing it on-prem is somewhere around 50 terabytes. If you have less than 50 terabytes, we recommend you look into our Axel AI cloud product with Backblaze. You can have as few as two or three terabytes and, and get it analyzed this way. But once you get to 50 terabytes or more, then you need to kind of dedicate a server on-premise cataloging your storage. And that server, you know, typically fits in a rack, but you can also use a workstation. Nice. And now once you're sort of in Axel AI and you find the media you're looking for, yep. what can you do with it? Well, you can subclip it, you can push it out to social media. We have a premiere panel, and we also have a drag and drop application that works with DaVinci, Final Cut, and Avid. So essentially all the major editors, we can feed out the media and the metadata for people to be able to search inside their editor. Nice. And so obviously AI, hot topic, interesting topic. Sure. Uh, you have a very practical application of it. Where do you mm -hmm. kind of see the future uses of like the reality of what's gonna happen with AI, of how we're gonna incorporate that into our creative workflows? I think it's almost unlimited at this point. I think everyone is coming to that realization like, it's like well, it's gonna do this, but it's not gonna do that. And then six months later, it's doing that, <laughs> right? So we're always like, okay, I don't know. It's gonna just keep going. The important thing is that for everyone in the creative community to realize that they are riding a wave, they are not facing the wave. Like, you can benefit from all this technology and really raise your game. You know, we did a little promo video that included VFX that we could never have afforded, but, you know, we used some of the AI engines to generate that, and what do you know, we have a really cool looking promo. And so, just realizing that, that a lot of the traditional ways of working 
may not be necessary and that you can use AI where it's most beneficial. I think that'll allow our entire industry to raise its game, but it is also a threat to a lot of people's jobs. So somehow we have to we have to keep both things in mind. You know, I mean, but do you feel like, I guess where is that, like Axel, maybe it replaces uh, someone that might've been a footage logger, but do you feel like it opens up more possibilities for someone who might've just had a pile of footage anyways that they were well, gonna actually, hire someone? Exactly, much more the latter. In fact, the, the idea that you were ever gonna be able to hire enough interns to log like petabytes of footage, <laughs> it's just a non-starter, right? And Linus Tech Tips just did a video mm -hmm. on us and turns out they have two petabytes of footage for a YouTube channel. Right. Yeah. No one's ever gonna log that. So this idea that we're putting someone out of work, it's like, nah, what it really means is they can get back into their material and reuse it better. And I, I think our application in particular is, is clearly not about taking jobs. It's about making the few people that focus on this a lot more productive. All right, so I'm here with Neil, and uh, Neil's going to give us a little demo of Axel AI. So yeah, Neil, let's see, uh, let's see what we got. Um, so what we're seeing here is um, Axel Media Management. Uh, down the left-hand side, we have our catalogs, and inside each catalog, we have different content. And the different content um, is basically different folder paths in the, uh, in, on the storage. You basically um, mount the different storage volumes and we create the proxies automatically so we can scrub through here uh, there and are the proxies stored on your storage or wherever we set up a separate path for the proxies then um, that can be wherever yes, you want yeah okay so if you're running on a mac we set up a thunderbolt drive if you're running in a vm we set up either additional drives in the server or a network drive the proxies are around about five percent of the original media format size so that's something that we, we discussed with the customer to start with other key things here we have um customizable metadata. Mm -hmm. So we discuss with the customers what they need. If they have an existing system that they're migrating to Axel from, then we would match as closely as possible their current metadata. But if it's a customer who's coming to MAM for the first time, we would then work with them to see what they needed and help them construct their uh, initial metadata. These are all like custom fields, they could build yes. out whatever kind of metadata yes. field they need. And if I go to another catalog, we can see we have completely different metadata um, in here. Okay. Um, and we've got um, preset fields, drop down menus, radio buttons and things. And we can enter metadata on single files, or on multiple files, pages of files and folders full of files. So it's easy to get data in. And then uh, just real quick, so the, the storage, are, could these be from different storage yes. uh, locations yes. in one spot? So okay. for example, um, in, in our office, um, I'm, I've got some catalogs running on a QNAP and I've got other catalogs running in Synology NAS as well. So we can we can touch different NAS devices. And so you can bring them all into one collection from different, yes. uh, wherever yep. they're at. Yep. We can also back up content and we can back up to disk, tape or cloud. With um, When we're backing up to LTO tape, um, we can work with things like Zendata or Archiware or mm -hmm. QSTAR. And we have a very simple archive icon. Uh, we have a triangle icon here that's telling me the status of the archives. No triangle means I've never archived it. A transparent triangle means I have archived, but the main media is still in the primary storage. And then I can start to remove the main content from the storage to clear up space. Yes, yeah, so that's like an indicator, like it is archived, yeah. but it's yeah. still there. So yes. if yeah. you delete it, you're not deleting your original media. Yes, yeah. Okay. Another key feature of Axel is the simplicity of use. So we only actually have two user menus. We've got the main user menu here. And we also have what we call an action menu. So if I select a clip, we have the drop down menu here, but I can also right click and do this. So it is very easy to access the controls for the, for the files. This is completely dependent on the user permissions. Some users will log in and see very little here. Others users might, might log in and see um, lots of different content. In other markets, we can also change the user menus to run in different languages. Um, so in certain certain geographies, you know, they want to run not in English, but they want to okay. run in maybe Arabic or French or German. So we can do that very easily as well. We integrate very nicely with different editors. So we can create what we call a shot list in our bins. We can export that shot list into something like Premiere Pro. And we also have a panel in Premiere Pro as well. This panel is free. The customers can install the panel in as many machines as they need. Um, and then we can um, import files and we can import bins directly into the editor without the editor having to leave their application. Okay. This also works with Photoshop, After Effects, and Illustrator. Is this doing anything with the actual project files as far as like sharing or managing project files? Is it uh, just the media? It's just the media. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We are also bringing across the AI tool, the AI data as well. So any speech to text will come across and then any um, um, object data will come across as well. One of the key features um, that we're showing off um, at the show is our key tagging tools. Yes, um, this is the real magic. 
The key thing about this is it's on premise. Mm. We're not sending anything to the cloud. Most of our customers are not allowed to send to the cloud because they're in sealed environments or their government or their military. Mm. So we can do all of the processing um, on premise and we can um, teach the system faces. Mm -hmm. So the, the customers have a choice of going with um, a preset database or they can teach the system the faces that they're interested in. And we do that you, uh, um, sorry, yeah. with create a folder with the name of the person and then put between 12 and 20 images of each person and then we can upload that. What that will look like in Axel, if I was to do a search, let's say for um, Chris Himworth, it will come back with the files that I found. So I, I've got them here. So I'm going to open this one. So what I've got here is I've got a number of tabs under the player window. I've got the speech tab, which is showing me spoken word from the movie. I've got my faces tab here, so I can see exactly where the characters are in mm -hmm. the film. And I can see how long they're there for. And also we've got three different characters to here. Oh, so it's already seen like a real time timeline of where each moment where happens. Where so. each person is, yes. So what I can also do is I can search for faces and I can also search for the spoken word. And so they can find somebody who's saying a particular thing. Mm. So it's great for people who are um, building trailers if they mm. want to find some key points. One of the other things we can do, we now have a new uh, database, which is um, a vector database. So if I search for say a word like explosion, Mm -hmm. The system knows that with an explosion, you're going to have fire, you're going to have smoke, for example. Mm. So in the search results here, I do have an explosion here, which we'll come back to. But the system has also came up, come up with fire and smoke, so I can find different clips that I can look at. If I open up this particular um, clip here, and what we have here under the scenes there, um, and then I can say um, explosion, and I can jump to that point, and there's my explosion. That's so right. I can do something like that. And I can see the ins and the outs of that. And also I can see different descriptions of what's going on in uh, the clip there. And I've also got um, logos and objects. So if somebody maybe was doing motorsports and they wanted to search for Ferrari, I can uh, search for something like that. And if I spell it correctly, it'll work better. So we, we can see we've got Lewis Hamilton um, and uh, some other drivers here. Yeah. And Come I've got the, the, the different logos. So I've got the Ferrari logo, the Red Bull logo, Mercedes logo. So I can see exactly where they are in the clip. Using Connector, our workflow engine, we could actually create a report of what, which logos were seen. And we can also calculate how long that the logos were actually seen for in, the, in a particular clip, which might be interesting for a, a, a client. And also sticking to the motorsport theme, uh, we can also recognize numbers on cars or numbers in the back of shirts. Yeah. So we can do a search for faces, but we could also say, find me car 35, and then we can find all the segments with car 35 in it, which is quite cool. With the uh, the transcription, are you able to identify um, and tag speakers? Um, we will be able to, yes. Okay. So the, 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 the software can do it, we just haven't implemented that yet. So in the future you could say, show me whenever this person says yes. this yeah. line. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that, and that will then appear as different colors um, on screen. I mean, one thing I didn't show you was we can actually turn the transcription on. So now when I'm, I'm playing a clip and listening to it, we can also see um, what's going on with that. We can also export the transcription and we can export it as an SRT file. So if it's a broadcaster, they can then use that file somewhere else. Another major feature, we're not doing anything proprietary. Mm -hmm. We're using Postgres, um, we're using um, a vector database, we're using Elasticsearch. We're not locking down the user's storage or content. We can get metadata in, so we can migrate from uh, legacy systems, but we can also get metadata out as well. So if they want to use our metadata somewhere else, they can very easily export that as well. The metadata so, that, that whatever was uh, generated from the yes. model, you could send yeah. that to somewhere, yeah. somewhere else. And then also when we're into, um, integrating with editors, we can send the, um, the AI-based metadata across as well. Okay. So we have a client in LA that are doing searches for um, fam uh, famous faces, and also what they're saying. And then when we send the content to Media Composer, we are sending the face and the speech to text information as well. Okay. And then any other, um, anything else we didn't cover? Um, well, we, we, some, another new feature we've got is we've, we've got a dashboard, um, which is completely customizable. This is designed for admins to basically give them an overview of what's happening in the system. So we've got the asset count, we've got the number of assets that have been processed by AI. So another item is with, our tags, I forgot to mention this, the customer 
pays for the, the, the service, but they're not paying for the actual processing time. So they, they, they pay the subscription fee and then they can process a single file or they can process 10,000 files without extra cost. Oh, so it's not really based, the price is not based on the dura- the number of minutes no. processed? Okay. No. So how, how, is the, how is the pricing mm-hmm. structured? So the we can break down the tags into the, 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 the four different groups. So we've got face, mm-hmm. um, objects, logos, um, and the, the image detection. And they're about $200 a month, uh, each one. Each one, okay. So, um, the user can pick up the ones they want. Uh-huh. Um, and of course, since it's a subscription, they can shut it down when, okay. when they want as well. And like once you analyze and tag something, like if you tagged a bunch of footage one month, yeah. and then you're like, well, I'm not bringing anything new in, you yeah. still have the data from yeah. before. Exactly, okay. yes, yeah. And but the, the, the ideal target audience would be somebody with a very large archive, maybe mm-hmm. an archive of 10 or 15 or 20 years. They don't have the, the staff or the time yeah. to analyze it. So they can just process it in Axel and then literally send everything for processing in-house yeah. and then the data will be ready for them. Yeah. I mean, if it's a 30 year archival, it'll take some time, but yeah. they'll, they'll get the results back. Yeah. It is faster than real time when we are processing. So that, that's a, like, a cool thing. And that is Axel. All right. Well, thank you so much for the demo. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, that was great. Really excited stuff. Uh, thanks a lot, Sam. Appreciate thank it. you. Yeah, thanks. And that is it for this video. Be sure to check out the rest of our NAB coverage over here at this playlist and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next episode.